Good morning. We are Team Acumetrics Faultline, and our project is Power Signature Analysis for Fault Detection and Predictive Maintenance. Our technical director is Brendan Smearbeck, a software engineer at Acumetrics and recent URI graduate. Our team consists of two computer engineers, Dan Foreman and Brianna McDonald, and three electrical engineers, Dominic Barada, 80s Embla Ludwig's daughter, and myself, Lucas Halkides. Acumetrics is a trusted market leader in RUPS, or Rugged Uninterruptible Power Supplies, for defense contractors. These power supplies are often deployed in, into harsh combat environments, making reliability an essential for their products. It becomes an expensive and long process to ship the product back to headquarters to diagnose the problem, should one arise. The vision for Team Faultline is to be able to diagnose a technical issue with a product non-intrusively while still deployed in the field. The economic impact of the technology reaches far beyond power supplies and has the ability to save money and increase efficiency within a company. Executing this vision requires the integration of three core functionalities, the first being power signature analysis. All devices produce unique electrical characteristics as seen in the power triangle. These characteristics can range from active, reactive, and apparent power, as well as power factor and harmonics. The set electrical characteristics the device displays over a set period of time is seen as the power signature. When a device is operating normally, it will produce a certain power signature, while if the device is operating suboptimally, those electrical characteristics will change, producing a different signature. Using machine learning, or ML, we can study the relationship between the monitored powered signature and an associated fault mode. As an example, an ML algorithm can be used to map input images to vehicle types. Given a set of images with known vehicle classifications, the ML model will train on the input images to learn the translation from image input to vehicle type. When provided with a new input image, the trained model will make a prediction on the image's classification, known as an inference. In our case, we are training an algorithm to correlate power data from faulty devices with specific fault modes. Finally, by integrating the power data from fault modes with a machine learning algorithm, we are able to create fault predictions. We chose a LASCO fan as the device which we would test for our fault predictions. We chose this specific device because of its ability to exhibit gradual electromechanical failure, which is important when learning the difference in power data. Our anticipated best outcome was to create a system capable of modeling and detecting abnormalities in behavior, represented by the FDU or fault detection unit in the diagram below. In this ideal system, we would have the FDU accept analog inputs such as voltage and current from an appliance, then output an inference to a set of LEDs, which would alert the user to the type of fault present in the appliance. We are happy to announce that our anticipated best outcome has been achieved. On the left, we have our old DCU, or data collection unit, and our fully functioning FDU on the right. Here is an overview of the steps we took to get to our functioning FDU. First off, we will be diving into the development of our first product, the DCU, which we worked on in our previous semester. After thorough research, the analog ADE7880 IC was selected for its functionality, compatibility, and accuracy with advanced power analysis features and single and polyphase data acquisition the chip was an ideal choice for its high precision energy monitoring calculations that are necessary to determine unique power signatures in addition it had an easy to use evaluation board in order to initially achieve our anticipated best outcome or abo a system was designed to read and collect data from the ade7880 the system utilizes the evaluation board current sense transformers, and 3.3 volt power supply to calculate power data from the fan analog inputs. The system is stored in a fiberglass box with three connection receptacles, USB Type-B for computer connections, a NEMA single wall outlet input for the fan, and a power socket that will feed electricity to the system from the wall. However, the system was unable to properly collect and log ADE7880 data. In addition to improperly collecting and logging data from the IC, the native software on the microprocessor to access that data was unintuitive. The team also found that the size of the board was unnecessarily large due to extraneous features in relation to our project. The team used the shortcomings we found in the DCU to move forward with our design of the FDU. 
Now I'll hand it off to Dominic to explain the development of the FDU. The first phase of developing the FDU was designing the hardware. Although the DCU contains many faults, it fundamentally served as a proof of concept that will give us the understanding to construct an ideal system. This is where the team formulated that the vital functions for an ideal system would require it to log power data and produce inference results. Additionally, the system would need a smaller, more portable design for it to prove useful with Acumetrics equipment. By realizing these functions, a generalized block diagram can explain the overall end product that we aim to achieve by the end of the semester. By feeding appliance power data to the ADE7080 IC, feature data would be collected and relayed via SPI to the Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi would then house a data collection script that would be fed to a machine learning model inference script that would ultimately produce a deduction to a set of LEDs that would determine an effective or defective appliance. So to achieve this outcome, focus was placed on the hardware side, the custom PCB that utili utilizes the key features of this IC. After using the evaluation board and realizing its shortcomings, we were able to dissect its functions and only utilize what would prove to be applicable to our end product. By utilizing a Raspberry Pi, the onboard microcontroller on the evaluation board would be unnecessary for the custom PCB. With this knowledge, the effective features that would be migrated over onto the custom PCB can be realized by looking at only half of the evaluation board. After conducting a consider considerable amount of research through understanding PIC configurations and characteristics within the IC datasheet, the design for a more compact PCB was an achievable goal. By applying the skills that were learned through URI's PCB design course, the optimal choice to implement the creation of this hardware component was Altium's free software, Circuit Maker. Once the schematic was designed, it was sent over to Acumetrix, where the layout was quickly created and sent out for fabrication of the ports. What you see on the screen now is the custom PCB that was created. As you can see, it achieved a compact design being half the size of the evaluation board. In future revisions, the board can be made to fit even smaller specifications, but it's made this way for an easier debugging process. With that being said, the board managed to achieve our goal of accurate energy metering and power data. The board functions by inputting a live ground and neutral connection, which originates from a wall 120 volt, 15 amp source configuration. The live and neutral currents must both first pass the ceramic through hole fuses as safety measures before reaching the current transformers. These current transformers will take this high input current and step it down to less than an amp so that the IC doesn't overdraw current and malfunction. This current flows through an anti-aliasing filter before it finally makes it to the IC. From here, the power data registers can be read by the Raspberry Pi. Once these connections were configured properly for the numerous PCBs, the board registers were all calibrated so that the Raspberry Pi will receive accurate power data information. The PCB is also equipped with connections to allow for metering of three-phase appliances, but due to lack of time, could not be thoroughly tested and experimented with. Overall, this PCB provides the appliance analog inputs to the IC and allows for the Raspberry Pi to retrieve data and make an inference. In order to interact with the IC, it was necessary to develop a set of deployable programs for the Raspberry Pi, which will be discussed by Dan on the software side. In order to collect power data, it was first necessary to develop a library to communicate with the IC. This library is known as the ADE7880 Communication Library, or simply the ADEC Library. This library utilizes low-level Linux drivers to send and receive SPI transactions at a rate of 2.5 MHz. Using this functionality, the library provides the capability to read and write individual registers and save and load the current register configuration. From the image on the right, you can see the Raspberry Pi sending data to the IC, shown in blue, and receiving data from the IC, shown in purple. As previously discussed by Dominic, to read accurate power data, it is necessary to calibrate the IC. As such, a command line interface was developed to interact directly with the ADE7880. This interface uses the ADEC library to read and write to specific registers utilized within the calibration process and save or load the resulting configuration. Used in conjunction with the programmable load, as shown on the right, our custom PCBs were calibrated. Following the calibration of the IC, it was possible to collect data from a set of predefined registers. As such, a data collection program was written with the ADEC library to read the registers at a set frequency and duration. The output of the registers is then sent to a CSV file. An example of this output can be seen on the right. This data represents the instantaneous voltage from a normal fan at a rate of 2 kHz. In order to feed 
real-time IC data to an ML model, the inference script was developed. This script makes fault predictions on the ADE-7880 data with an embedded ML model. To accomplish this, the script implements the following process continuously. Collects an instance of feature data, feeds the data to an ML model, and sends the results to a set of LEDs. Utilizing these deployable programs in conjunction with the custom PCB, the full FDU system was formed. As shown here, the analog voltage and current inputs are fed to the board. These values are then translated into power data via the IC. This data is then read by the Raspberry Pi and fed to an embedded ML model. The output of the model is then sent to a set of LEDs. In order to develop and produce fault predictions using the power to signature data, an ML model was utilized. The development of the model can be separated into two distinct phases, the current model and the alternative model. For the current model, the design phase began with the selection of an ML model. There are many different implementations of machine learning models. For our application, a recurrent neural network was selected. As depicted on the right, a neural network translates a set of inputs into outputs via specific operations, known as hidden layers. Recurrent neural networks are a specialization of a neural network that is capable of learning trends in temporal data. In other words, given a set of registers collected over a set length, the model would learn trends for each register to produce accurate fault predictions. Within the fall semester, our team was able to develop a process to train an ML model, including visualization of the input data, preparation of the input data to the model, facilitation of the training process via TensorFlow, an evaluation of the overall accuracy of the model. This model is currently used by the FDU to make its fault predictions. As an alternative to the current design, Brianna will discuss another potential implementation for the ML model. As an alternative to our current model, an artificial neural network or ANN could be used. However, this model cannot utilize temporal input data. To avoid this issue, the instantaneous inputs were converted from the time domain to the frequency domain using FFTs. To train an ANN, the following changes were implemented within the training process. First, modification of the model structure to utilize different layer operations. Next, utilization of fast Fourier transforms to convert the temporal data into the frequency domain. Then, transformation of the FFT data into binary vectors for the input to the model. Lastly, Visualization of multi-class rock curves. Next, ADs will talk about the different fault modes we induced onto our target appliances. In order to train the ML model, it was necessary to induce unique fault modes into the target appliance. Over the course of the two semesters, our team induced three fault modes within the fans. First one increasing the load to the motor where five coins were attached to one blade. Second, decreasing the load where a single blade was removed from the fan. The last one was burning out the motor by holding the blade still for 30 seconds, repeated for 20, 20 iterations. In addition to our target appliance, the team wanted to showcase the usability of the end system by using it with an, another appliance. As such, our team also collected data from a Hayward pump a device being investigated by another capstone team. Our team only induced a single fault mode into the Hayward pump, a restriction of water flow. This fault mode simulates environmental factors that can affect the operation of the pump, such as blockages from dirt or leaves. Due to difficulty in logging the raw power data from the DCU, we use a power and energy logger, or PAL to collect the large amount of data required for ML model trading. The PEL collects analog inputs at 1 Hz, which meant that we needed even more hours of data than if it was a faster sample rate. For all the fans, we collected a total of 130 hours. Additionally, we collected about 50 hours worth of data for the Hayward pump. Due to time constraints, our team only collected 30 minutes worth of data for each operation mode using the FDU. However, the FDU can collect data at over 2000 Hz, which results in overall more data in comparison to the DCU. Since collecting data with the Hayward pump was outside the scope of our initial project, our team didn't use the FDU on this appliance.
With all aspects of the project covered, we can now move into the inference results. For the accuracy results using the PEL, the ML model was able to make accurate predictions for the majority of the planned test cases. However, the model had some difficulties differentiating between two of the fault modes. This may be caused by a lack of differentiation between the two faults. With the ML model generated from the ADE7880 data, a similar accuracy was received in comparison to the PEL train model. Additionally, the model was able to make highly accurate predictions on the PEL collected Hayward pump data, which confirms the application can be extended to different devices. To review, initially our team came into the school year with no knowledge of AC power or machine learning or any other core concept of the project. All our team had was an idea, to uniquely identify a device based solely on its power signature. To reach this goal, our team initially developed a data collection unit. Although it was unable to properly log power data, it gave us the confidence to reach our goal. Based on the DCU's shortcomings, our team developed our final product, a device that can not only collect and log power data, but also produce fault predictions in real time. To demonstrate the undeniable success of our project, our team has created a short video to demonstrate its functionality. In this demonstration, we plug in three different fans and a prediction is made by an LED indication. The LED mapping can be seen on the left. For this fan, we are evaluating the normal fan. As you can see, it switches from the initial red LED to the correct green LED. For the fan with the coins attached, it pre prematurely switches to the green LED. However, following a full inference, it switches to the correct red LED. The final test was a fa fan with a blade missing. Without a fan connected, the model predicts that the appliance is a cutoff fan blade. As such, the LED does not change. With that being said, we want to thank the following people for the constant support on the project, especially our technical director, Brendan Smearbeck, who has provided us with great guidance to successfully achieve our anticipated best outcome. We also want to recognize Acumentric's Vice President of Engineering, Bill Owens, and Acumentric PCB Specialist, Mike Mastelani, for their support on the project. Our machine learning consultant, Najib Ishak, has also proven to be an astounding resource throughout the year. Lastly, we want to thank our Capstone Program Director, Dr. Sunak, for his limitless guidance and ability to make this program possible.